Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at solving trig equations. In particular I'm going to be looking at equations which involve sine and cos graph work. Uh, we'll leave the tan equations for another time. Okay, now quite often in the exam they'll break down these type of questions into parts for you. Parts A, B and possibly a part C. Let's have a look at a typical example to show you what I mean. Okay, question one, part A. It says sketch the graph of y equals sine x. Okay, now a sketch does not mean table of values. It does not mean accurate picture. All I'm going to do for part A is simply set up very quickly. Yes, I'd use a ruler, but I'm not even going to do this on the board with a ruler. I'm going to set up a y and x axis, and I'm going to sketch a sine graph, a sine wave. It says, sketch the graph y equals sine x. Now, it will tell you somewhere in the question what angle range it wants you to use. Well, reading on in part B, it says, use it to help you solve sine x equals 0.5, and there's the range that I need to use. So I'm going to do a sketch of a sine, y equals sine x graph between 0 and 360. So here we go. Uh, that's 0 degrees. Now, a little hint for you when you're doing a, a sketch of a sine graph. Do not put all the markings on the axes first. Draw the sine graph first, and then put the markings on. So a sine graph, 0 to 360, would look something like this. This is the sketch of y equals sine x. Okay, so there's the sketch y equals sine x. You need to put on important features like 1 at the top, at the peak, and minus 1 at the bottom, as we discussed in a previous video. So we know those are the peak and the minimum values, if you like. We also should know that that there is 180 degrees, and that there is 360 degrees. I would suggest to you, to help you in this type of question as well, that you mark on the peak would be at that point there, which from symmetry would be 90 degrees, and the trough down there would be from symmetry there, which would be 270 degrees. So there you go. There is the sketch of y equals sine x. Now, that's part A done. Fine. And you'll get a couple of marks for doing that. Now, part B is going to ask you to use that sketch. Notice it's not an accurate picture. Use that sketch to help you get the answer to what we call a trig equation. And as the title up here, I don't know if you've read the title up here, suggests, what you're going to do is use your sketch in combination with a calculator to get your answers. Let me show you what I mean. What we're going to do is solve sine x equals 0.5. Okay, so if I write this down, sine of x equals 0.5, here is the equation I'm going to solve. Now, if you remember your work on solving equations graphically, um, if you want to solve this equation graphically, we're going to do two graphs. The first of the graphs we're going to do is to actually plot y equals, on the left-hand side, sine x. Well, we've actually got that picture. That picture there is y equals sine x. We've done it as part A, which is a sketch. The second part of the problem is to do another graph y equals, here we are, y equals the right hand side, which is 0.5. y equals 0.5 is a very simple straight line. You simply go to 0.5 on your y scale, which is about there, and you draw a horizontal straight line, which looks something like that. That's the name y equals 0.5 of that straight line. That's the equation of that line. Now, as you can see, what you're finding is that the straight line and the sketch of y equals sine x intersect in two places. They intersect there and there. And the solution to this equation will be the x values which you can locate by dropping down these two vertical lines to the x-axis and reading off the x-axis scale as you've done many times in previous videos on solving equations graphically. Now that's all well and good. If I'd done a really accurate picture with a table of values, I could actually read off those values from my scale and that's the end of the question. But this is a sketch. These values here are not accurate. These values here you'd have to guess if you were using a sketch. The examiner wants the exact answers. Your sketch on its own cannot give you exact answers. So what you need to do is now get hold of a calculator. 
Okay. Now, on your calculator, we'll come back to those blue markings in a minute that I've put there and there. I'll come back to those answers in a minute. Let's now have a look at sine x equals 0.5. Now, if you think about it, if you were doing a nice, easy right angle triangle calculation using basic right angle trigonometry work, using the Sokotoa method that I described in a previous video on right angle triangle work, for example, let me show you, if I was doing a triangle calculation and I was trying to find out what angle X was and I said to you that that side there is 1 and that side there is 2 and if that was one and, if those were the sides 1 and 2 for this picture, find X this is what you would do in a very simple right angle trigonometry question you'd label the three sides, if that's the X, that's the opposite side, that's the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent. And you would then use one of the three formulae for sine, cos or tan work relating to this particular right angle triangle. It's a right angle in the corner. So what you'll know is that the opposite side is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. Now the correct formula which links O and H is the sine formula for right angle triangle work. And the sine formula, the sine of angle X, is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So in this particular case, the sine of the angle, if I'm trying to find out what the angle is, it would be equal to the opposite side is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. I'll explain what I'm doing and how this relates to this in a minute. So when you were doing that basic right angle triangle trigonometry work on easier videos, you will have had that the sine of x is equal to 1 shared by 2. If you work that out on a calculator, it's 0.5. If you like, a half is the same as 0.5 on the right-hand side. Now, what method did you then do when you were doing this basic right-angle triangle work on Sokotoa or right-angle trigonometry? What did you do to go from sine x equals 0.5 to find out what the angle x was? Well, what it, you should remember is you pressed on your calculator shift sine 0.5 or inverse sine 0.5 or possibly arc sine 0.5 or second function sine 0.5, depending on what your calculator button was. But it's the backward process for sine that you should be using, the inverse sine button. And if you press on a calculator, I've got one here, Inverse sine of 0.5, well I actually know what the answer should be, but you do that, shift sign 0.5 and press equals, it would actually give you an answer of 30 degrees. Okay, so when I come to this point here and I'm trying to now solve this equation, can you see that this equation is exactly the same as that equation you were doing for the uh, very simple right angle trigonometry work? So you might say, oh, OK, that's easy. So why do I need to bother with the graph? X will be equal to 30 degrees. Well, you've got to be careful, because this is slightly more advanced than doing that sort of work for a right-angled triangle. Because if you look at this here now, look at the picture. The picture tells you there should be two answers, not one, which is the solution to this, where the curve and the straight line meet which is the solution to this equation. Not one answer, two answers. Now quite clearly, if you look at the picture, x equals 30, which is what the calculator gave, will obviously respond to this value here on your sketch. So if you did a really accurate diagram with a table of values and dropped down that vertical line there to the x-axis, it would be 30 degrees. So I've got that answer. However, the calculator does not give you the second value, which is obtained at that point there. So how do you work out the second value? Well, that second value comes from your sketch, because your sketch is a symmetrical picture. If you look at this sketch here, then you will see from symmetry, I'm shading in that little portion of the picture there, from symmetry, that will be the same as that little portion I'm shading in there. So that means if from there to there is 30 degrees, then that gap there must also be 30 degrees. 
that gap from there to there must be 30 degrees, the same as that gap from there to there. So that means, if that's 180 and that gap is 30 degrees, then that reading there must be 150 degrees from symmetry using your sketch. So the second answer that I'm going to write down is 150 degrees. And that answer there comes from the sketch, and it comes from the symmetry of the sketch. So that's really important. The first answer comes from your calculator, just as if you were doing a right angle triangle equation inverse sine 0.5. That therefore must be the 30 in that position. And so from symmetry, we can work out the second answer using the sketch symmetry to be 150 degrees. And these are the two answers. Let me just tie this together now. Of course, when you were doing this calculation on right angle triangle work, you didn't need to bother with the second answer to this equation, sine x equals 0.5, because you couldn't have had a right angle triangle with 90 in the corner and x equaling 150. It wouldn't physically be possible. So we weren't bothered about the second answer at that stage. We only used the first answer, 30, which had to be the answer that fitted the picture. It couldn't be 150. But technically, theoretically, when you're doing that equation, there are two answers between 0 and 360 that work. 30, calculator gives, 150, which is coming about from symmetry of the sketch. And that is a very basic example, okay, um, this is part B here. That is a very basic example of how we use a sketch of a trig curve together with a calculator to solve a trig equation. And be careful, there's more than one answer they're looking for within the given range. That's the end of this video. In future videos, I will carry on with this and expand it a little bit and make things a little bit different and a little bit more difficult. But that's the end of this short video for now.